welcome to Supernatural Life. You might be struggling right now with some issues that have hurt you or oppressed you or challenges in front of your life. And you're wondering, what am I, what am I going to do? I don't even have the strength to move forward or you just feel hopeless. Well, this show is about hope and discovering hope for your life. And with me, I have a dear friend and prophet, Dr. James Gall. Yeah. And it's awesome always to have you on the program. But this is part two of this message. So if you didn't get part one, um, go online and, and, and watch it because it's really good and it'll really minister to you. But we're going to move forward yes. from the last program and really um, dig deeper. Mm -hmm. Now, in our last program, you shared about your battle with cancer yes. because you, you're a survivor, mm -hmm. and, but it was a I've big battle. I've been clean, clear, yeah. and free for nine years now. That's wonderful. And mm -hmm. you had two bouts of battle with it. Three. Then, three. And then you lost your wife, mm -hmm. um, so you had to go through that. And mm -hmm. there's other health issues yes. and financial issues yes. that you shared on the last program. Yes. So that can take anybody down. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could lose your hope for life and say, oh, yeah. why, why bother even trying? You know, mm -hmm. this is kind of a battle too big for me. But mm -hmm. you went and pressed in mm -hmm. and you found hope mm -hmm. and you cultivated hope. And now you're mm -hmm. a hope giver. Mm -hmm. And now you have a message because mm -hmm. the devil's attacks against us will mm -hmm. produce our, our message. Right. I just want to say that you go messes there. produce messages. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you might be in a really difficult situation, but don't lose your hope. Don't lose your hope. Gain fresh hope. And that's what we want to impart to you today. Mm -hmm. Now, in your journey yes. of finding hope, because it wasn't like hope was just automatically there. You had to fight no. for it. Yeah. But you discovered some things that were enemies of hope, oh, like yeah. unforgiveness and oh, yeah. other things. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, because I, I took a pretty integrated approach. Bible first, prayer and worship. And then I also integrated, like restoring the foundations. And But these are just different Christian uh, therapy type things sure. for healing. Okay. So I integrated that and life languages and things of that nature. So here's part of what I discovered is that the enemy tries to get you isolated, get you to where you not only think you're alone and you actually pull away from people and you become alone. So I found three negative responses to tragedy, to disappointment, mm -hmm. to trauma, to trials. I found that people will move away from God and away from trusted community. And that's what a lot of people do. And that's what they need though. And that's exactly the opposite. Yeah. So you look at, see, it's sometimes it's called negative definition. Mm -hmm. What people do, but it's then they need to do the opposite. So one, the move against God, I'm mean, excuse me, move away from God and away from trusted community. They just drop out because they think it's safer there. So dangerous. So. And that's a lie. It's yeah. not safer there. Okay. A second thing that people will do, and I found my soul being tempted to do all three of these things move away from God. Hey, you prophetic guy. Uh, I'm a mouthpiece, and it's like, okay, uh, why? Yeah. So I know I did an incomplete sentence there, but I'm just letting you like get into where I met, where I was. So move away from God, move away from trusted community, or how about move against, move against God, and then move against trusted community or family relationships. Period. And when you move away, it's isolation. When you move against, you get bitter. Right. You are angry. And it goes towards outbursts of anger. And you move against God. You move against the church. And maybe social media, maybe you're now what's called toxic. Yeah. I would take almost like a, a barometer reading on myself. And I would go, am I toxic? And then there's another dimension, and it's where we move towards, but for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. We can move towards people as though they're going to be our solution, and we move towards them for acceptance. And we can become very needy at that point. And codependent. Yeah. And so I did find all three at different levels of that in my own life, and I went before God. 
And I just want you to know this. We each go through trials. But in Psalm 23, it says this, though I walk through the valley, every, there's mountains. There are no mountains without a valley. And every valley leads to a mountain mm -hmm. if you can see it. But Psalm 23 says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear, fear no, no evil. So just don't sit down in the valley. If you have to crawl, crawl. If you've got to like, just like choose each day, choose each day and every decision will make a difference. And then you won't be moving away from, you won't be moving against, and you won't have the wrong, like needy, 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 mm -hmm. eventually, because Jehovah, Jesus, He really is our healer. I can tell you this, He has healed my soul. And I'm gonna say something else that sounds so unusual. I like this version of me better than the earlier versions of James Gall. What? Because I'm being changed. Yeah, and the trials you've been through have been bringing such transformation on so many levels. And that's the same with all of us yes. when we go through our hard places. And that's why we want to encourage yes. you as you're watching this to really know really know that, that you might be in a hard place right now and you yes. might be feeling hopeless and helpless and bitter mm -hmm. and offended. But if you climb out of that pit there you go. and grab hold of hope, because hopelessness, James, mm -hmm. is looking at your current situation without <sighs> thinking there's a different way. That's right. But hope mm -hmm. shows you your tomorrow that is full of expectation for a good thing. Hopelessness is called a downward spiral. The thought goes here and it says, I don't feel good today. And then you think that that thought is about you. And then there's another thought and then that thought and this thought and that thought and it's a downward spiral. But what we need to grasp is those thoughts are not about us. And they're not even originating with us. It's one of the subtle tricks of the, right. of the liar, right. Satan, and his dominions, his minions. And he's speaking about himself. So he says thoughts, he says words, and we think they're about us. It's a bad day today. Yeah. It's gonna be worse. There's no place in the body of Christ for me. They don't even like me in church. Huh. And, and then he'll set up little circumstances yes. to confirm it, right? Yes, yeah. and we that's a downward spiral. Yeah. And we think sure. that that is about us. No, 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 no. That is the enemy talking about himself. And Paul the Apostle said, we're not to be ignorant of the devil's schemes. So we got to put on our helmet of hope, of salvation, filter what we hear, mm -hmm. fill, change what we think that something good is about to happen. Yeah. And that has been one of my fights. And I want you to know this. I say every day, whether I feel like it or not, miracles are mine. Miracles are coming to me and miracles are flowing through me. And I just say right now, your mess is an opportunity for God's next miracle. It right really on. Is. I'm getting a scripture right now that I wanna share um, with, with some of you. This might really minister to you, but it's a simple one. It's out of Psalm 23 yeah. and it says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the all days of the my days. life. So if you're in a in a pit right now where it doesn't look like goodness and mercy is there, yeah. remember to grab hold of that promise because right. it's true. And you can hold God to his promises. Mm -hmm. You can say, I'm looking for goodness and mercy to be following mm -hmm. me today. In the situation that right. I'm in, I'm gonna see your goodness. In the situation that I'm in, I'm gonna see your mercy. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that that's gonna help strengthen yes. you is to get you back up on your feet. Because like you said, that yep. downhill spiral, mm -hmm. it is a wicked spiral. But we can flip. It, but we can turn it and it can go upward. That's right. And even one one promise out yes. of the word, quicken to your heart, can change everything for yeah. you. So we're going to take yeah. a break right now. We'll be right back to minister to you. And um, we want to talk about the subject of you being an ambassador of hope because yes. God has need of you. There's a whole world out there that yeah. is just without hope. He needs you to be commissioned as his ambassador. We'll be right back. Thank you. 
Well, welcome back to this amazing conversation we're having with Dr. Yeah. James Gall on the subject of hope and discovering hope for your life. And I know that many of you are needing hope right now, and we're just believing for a big infusion of it mm. through this program into your heart, into your household, into whatever circumstance that you are facing. But uh, James, we're gonna talk mm. about um, our people becoming hope ambassadors yeah. um, in a moment. But before we do, um, you've got some really great insights on some areas. And this one um, mm. is that not every story ends up the way we want it. So if we're in a hard place, we've got a dream of how it's going to end up. Mm -hmm. And if that dream doesn't come to pass, mm -hmm. how do we learn to reconcile trusting God enough to realize this? Now, I was just talking with someone just the other day mm -hmm. who their hope was to be married to a certain individual. Sure. Yep. They thought even God yep. led them into them. it and yep. they had confirmations yep. and it didn't work out. Yep. And so they were crushed, mm -hmm. absolutely crushed. How, and, and that's just one example, no, there's so many examples, sure. but, but how do we reconcile that? Yeah. People who lose their jobs, people who mm -hmm. unexpectedly have a divorce, me unexpectedly became a single parent, or many, many, many issues. How about a, a, a global pandemic? Sure. You know, so one of the things I had to go to is what I call identifying my core values, that I, make decisions ahead of time and they're my core values and so i identified three basic core things one god is good all the, all time. the time now i had to really go do i really believe that or is that just a nice religious cliche mm -hmm. and i started thinking it was just a nice little southern saying or something and then the more i read the word renewed my mind i went no it's true and i reestablished that one God is good, period, yeah. is the way I say it. Yeah. He's good, period. He's just good, yeah, period. He is good. Second. There's no ungoodness in God. <laughs> no, God, God cannot uh, do something uh, contrary to his yeah, nature. Exactly. God's nature is, he's a good, good. He's good. He's, hey, somebody out there already right now, you just really need to know that you really have a good, good father. You really do. We really do. So one is that God is good, period. Another thing was then I went to Romans 8, 28, basic scriptures. All things, not some things, all, all things. things work together for good. For those who love God have been called to his purpose. But what I gleaned out of it in a very simple manner is that it doesn't say God causes everything. Well, what? It doesn't say God causes everything. He works everything. everything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah. say that everything in life is good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that. But it does say this. If you will bring it, those who love God, if you'll bring it to Him, yep. I call it the mystery and the majesty of God. He will mesh it, mold it. Absolutely. Work it. Yeah, come on. He'll work it. All things will work together for good for those who love God. Mm -hmm. So my number one thing I had to reestablish was God's good, period. Number two, all things are working together for good. Then number three, I just went logically. And I went, well, that means something good is just about to happen. Right on. I started feeling like I was almost like Oral Roberts. I started actually feeling like I want to sing that song. Something good, good. is just about to, happen. to happen. And hope is the positive expectation of good. And so I want to encourage you to put these anchors down in your life and they'll help posture you. Mm -hmm. But I got to give you one more key before we go to Hope Ambassadors. And it is, I think this was one of the big ones for me. I had to learn to worship God with my questions. Right. So good. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all oh, your mind. No, all your heart. Trust the Lord with all your understanding. No, trust the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Lean not. We're going to lean one direction or another. Don't lean on your own understanding. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge Him. And it says His will and His mystery and His majesty Destiny will unfold. Yeah. And something Absolutely. good.
is going Absolutely. to happen. Absolutely. You know, James, you and I both know just from being in ministry yeah. that some of the most horrific situations that we would weep oh, over at the time yes. and and just die a thousand deaths within yes. our soul mm -hmm. at the time turn out to be some of the greatest testimonies. In mm -hmm. fact, we even write whole books about them, right? Yeah, that's they, true. They turn out to be such a good yes. story. And I know that mm -hmm. you can relate to that too. I know you can. Yes. Is that you can take some of the most horrific things that happen to you, and before you know it, you're laughing about it years yes. later, right? That's and so, right. you know, just just remember that, that it can be turned together. It'll work together work for together. good. I, now, want, I want the people to know mm -hmm. right now, you can be the next Hope Ambassador. An ambassador is a representative of a higher uh, a rank and a person of a higher authority. We are ambassadors and you qualify. You say, no, I don't. I'm saying, yes, you do. You qualify to become molded and shaped and remade so that you can be an ambassador in the world right now. The world needs people of hope. And the scepter of the Lord is being lowered towards you right now. Someone in England, someone in Liverpool, someone in South Africa, someone in Mumbai, uh, India, someone, I don't even know if God TV goes into in, in Indonesia, but I'm sure on the internet it does. I see a, a Jakarta and I just say, you are going to be chosen to be the next Hope oh, Ambassador. I love it. I love it. And that means you, it absolutely means you. And you know what I love, James, is that if you don't have hope yourself, uh -huh. go sow some hope into someone else. Be a hope ambassador and yes. sow encouragement into mm -hmm. others. Give them hope for their future. And you'll yeah. find that as you sow, it will be given yes. back unto you. Because God, God needs you. There is a world out yeah. there that is so heavy and heavily laden and they're yes. making all kinds of mistakes yeah. are being they're being violent and yeah. they're hating each other and all kinds of things because they lack hope. Mm -hmm. Everything looks hopeless, but we are people of hope. You yes. are an ambassador of hope and God is anointing you right now, right now. to be his hope ambassador. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? Just receive that in Jesus name. Drink that in. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to a break and we'll be right back. Well, welcome back to this amazing program on hope. And I, and I hope mm -hmm. that you are basking in your hope ambassadorial anointing because yeah. God has commissioned you as an ambassador of hope. I also want to again remind you about James Call's book, Tell Your Heart to Sing Again, Discovering Hope for Your Life. I just want to ask you, James, it says, mm -hmm. tell your heart to sing again. Mm -hmm. Some people, when they read the topic, they might think, are you meaning that I'm supposed to sing again? Mm -hmm. What are you meaning by that? Well, in my life, it is a parable. Sure. But the reality is, God doesn't want your heart to be sad. God doesn't want your heart to be heavy. God wants us to cast our burdens upon Him because He cares. And a heart that sings is a heart that's joyful. Right on. I was not joyful, I was singing a sad song, but all things are subject to change. And so tell your heart, see, there's the key. Tell your heart to live again. Mm -hmm. Tell your heart there's resurrection again. Tell your heart to dream again. That's the point. Right on. So tell your heart to sing again. Um, go to your local bookstore or go online and order it today. And especially use it as an outreach yes. for people that you might know that are mm -hmm. going through really difficult times because we always want to be giving out. We always want to be those who are ambassadors of hope, who give out to others. We're like evangelists in that way, mm -hmm. bringing good news, okay? So we always want to think of others, not only what we're going through ourselves. And also I'm sensing yes. that there's people watching that you feel like an absolute mm -hmm. failure because you've compared yourself to another person yeah. and you've seen them go through in victory and you don't feel the same. You read mm -hmm. the Bible and you see how David made it and slew the giant, but you don't feel like you're slaying yours. And so you lost your hope because of comparison. And mm -hmm. James, maybe you want to just minister into that area. Yeah, You know, that is one of the subtle tricks of the enemy 
is again like referenced earlier about the enemy talks in first person. Well, another one is to get you looking in someone else's mirror. And it's like, oh, oh, you're supposed to be like them. Oh, oh, you're supposed to have their gifts. Oh, covet not your neighbor's, covet not your neighbor's anything. Because God's made you unique. Mm -hmm. I had a dream one time where, and this really impacted my life, where there was a journal, it opened up, and I could read prayers and declarations of people. And on the fourth page, it said, I, James W. Gall, vow to be all that I could be in Christ Jesus. And I vow to help others be all the unique vessel and all that they can be in Christ Jesus. Don't compare yourself to anyone other than Jesus. And throw that one away. <laughs> Take that mirror and toss it in Jesus' name because get your identity in Christ and you, there is no other one like you. I'm getting a word right now for a woman who has had miscarriage after miscarriage wow. after miscarriage and you've lost hope and you want a family oh. with such a deep mm. desire for a family. And even from a little girl, that's all you wanted was to be a mother. And it's like, it has been the most hardest emotional journey that you've been on. But I feel that God's saying right now a couple things. Number one, God plus nothing equals everything awesome. you need. Right now, just go to Him. He is, he is more than enough. But also, I really do sense that as you continue to press in, He's got answers for you. Mm -hmm. He's got a way for you. He's going to make a way. And the desire of your heart is going to be fulfilled. And right now, just be very, very careful not to get negative or bitter uh -huh. or offended, especially with God. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you've been spending a lot of money on different things as well, just to set it up. But it always ends in disappointment. Renew your hope. Stir up your hope because God loves you and He is with you. Amen. You know, so uh, I just keep seeing the picture. It's very simple. But you know, it's called, in, you know, the putting on the full armor of God. And we have the helmet of salvation. But First Thessalonians 5.8 says, it's the helmet of hope. Mm -hmm. And so it goes over the front of the mind and it goes over the ears. And so we have to filter what we hear and that determines what we think. And as we think, we will be. But I see people have taken their helmet off. It was just mm. sitting there. I want to say to you, put back on your helmet of hope. Because it's not too late. God's the God of a 50 millionth chance. And something good is just about to happen. Put it on right now. I speak you something Awesome. As there's somebody that lost uh, uh, an inheritance and that inheritance is released and you're going to come into a, a third uh, generational inheritance in Jesus' name. Woo. And I see someone that you have gotten a little bit bitter because of jealousy. You have yep. wanted a promotion so bad and you've worked hard. You've worked really hard. And actually in the natural, you deserve it. But someone else got the yeah. promotion rather than you. And it's been a really bad struggle. It's like everything in you just broke open and you know, you're suffering anger and resentment and jealousy and all those things. But the Lord says, don't, don't throw your hope away. Mm -hmm. Repent from all that stuff. It's mm -hmm. not going to help you, by the mm -hmm. way. It's just going to make you feel more miserable. And start sowing into that person who got it. Yeah. Start passing a bless love them. test and saying, Lord, I just bless the person who mm -hmm. got the position. And sow into your future. Sow into the coming promotion that's coming yes. by sowing love, sowing blessing. Because God is going to give you the desires of your heart. But you're in a bit of a testing time right now. You're in in a battle and God's going to get you through. We want to thank you so much yeah. for joining us on today's program and I hope that you've received hope <laughs> and that you have received anointing to be an ambassador of hope. So go out into the world that you live in uh -huh. and release God's supernatural life. God bless you. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your feedback, testimony or prayer request today or ask Patricia a question for a future program. And don't forget, you can continue growing in the supernatural with our premium e-courses. Connect with us at god.tv slash Patricia and join us next time for our next episode of Supernatural Life.